Welcome to Bespoken Bones with your host, Parvani Moray, connecting ancestors, sex, magic, and science. Parvani explores transpersonal tools for erotic wellness every new and full moon, engaging educators, healers, spiritual leaders, and scientists in revolutionary dialogue. Get ready to feel good and go deep. This is Bespoken Bones. Hi, and welcome to Bespoken Bones, Ancestors at the Crossroads of Sex, Magic, and Science. We're in the business of healing trauma, connecting with our roots, and developing radiant erotic wellness in past, present, and future generations. And I'm your host, Havani Moray. It's been really amazing to receive all of the messages and emails. The Patreon is totally rocking out. Um, lots of folks are jumping in there to support the podcast. And um, just want to invite you to do that. Jump in, drop a few dollars, say a prayer, make an offering to your people, um, and come and join us. And so you can do that at patreon.com slash bespoken bones. So, you know, many of us have beloved animals in our lives with whom we have deep and intimate and often long-term relationships And several listeners have written in seeking support um, around the devastating grief that they've experienced when their animal companion dies and have wondered about the connection um, with, with these animal friends beyond the veil. And so today it's super special to introduce you to Claudia Hare. And for Claudia, Humans and animals are the same. I mean, we are animals. And she says, we are all souls in physical bodies that we have chosen to express ourselves in this lifetime. Claudia has been a trendsetter in the animal field for several decades, and her work is recognized worldwide. By using her ability to communicate telepathically with animals, she truly is the voice of the animals, and she assists in areas as diverse as behavior issues, wellness issues, traumas, fears, and many other areas. And she also reconnects people with their animal family members who have left their physical bodies. Claudia is not only a translator between animals and humans, the connection goes much further. She's an empath, which makes her part of their beings and gives Claudia the advantage of an incredible depth of insight, knowledge, and understanding of animals. Not only can she communicate with animals, but she feels and knows physically and emotionally what's going on with them. So having no separation from them really makes her understand their behaviors, reasonings, actions, like no one else really can. And her other incredible ability is to identify the higher purpose and therefore the true meaning of the circumstances and events for many animals and the guardians in their lives. And she's helps many people change their lives of their animal companions and their own lives for the better. She's written a bunch of books. And for more information about her, you can go to her website, which is claudiahair.com. I'll spell it for you. C-L-A-U-D-I-A-H-E-H-R.com. Claudia, welcome. Oh, Pavini, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Yeah, it's super special. I want to just have you speak first to this whole notion of animals, right? Because there's this disconnect between like, we're not animals. So who are animals? Well, there's a disconnect between humans and animals, but there's no disconnect between animals and humans. Because animals see us for who we really are. And that's what we have to do. We have to see animals for who they are, not what, not what they are. Because if you think about it, if you want to do it scientifically, if you take a little piece of your skin and you put it under a really strong microscope, you will see uh, cells, um, atoms, molecules. And then what you will see is vibrating energy. If you take a piece of your dog's skin as well, or your cat's skin or a horse, you know, like your skin, a piece of your horse, horse skin, and you put it under the same microscope, you will see cells, atoms, molecules, and energy. So we are literally all the same. We're all vibrating energy. We just look different. So, I mean, even you and I, we look different, right? And we are are from the same species. So for me, actually, a different species, an animal species, is a different culture. 
And so, yes, we are literally all vibrating energy. So there's absolutely no difference between humans and animals. Um, the outside is different, yes. So, of course, what an animal needs is different than what we need. So, for example, bird needs uh, air to fly, a fish needs water to swim, you know, we need you know, the earth to walk. <laughs> so the outside, we do have our bodies give, they have different um, needs. But on the inside, we are all the same. We all have feelings, emotions, and there's really no difference between humans and animals that way. Mm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like it. How would you talk about the communication that we have between us with with animals? Um, A lot of people think, first of all, because animals are different than we are, which again, is not the truth because we just look different. We can communicate with animals the same way as we can communicate with people. However, we don't need verbal communication. We use telepathy. I mean, if you think about it, what is communication? Communication is actually just an exchange of information. And that can be done in many, many ways. Think about it, okay. We put a lot of emphasis on our verbal communication, but there's also body language, there's scent, there is, I mean, if you write a letter, that's a way of communication. Um, I mean, look at all the social medias now. This is all a way of communication, right? Um, And then there's also uh, the telepathic communication. And we are all telepathic. If we know it or we don't, we are telepathic and so are our animal companions. So, and what I do as an animal communicator, I literally only translate the messages that the animals give me uh, telepathically. I translate them into words for people to hear. So I'm a translator between humans and animals. And we can communicate with animals about everything, anything and everything. I mean, you can talk to them about um, how they feel physically, emotionally, what happened to them in the past, Um, what, you know, if they have fears and traumas, we can deal with that. We can talk to them about their wishes, their goals. And there's really no difference. I mean, yes, I mean, animals are really not into possessions and that kind of stuff, right? They are more into happiness and joy. And so we can learn a lot from the animals, but we can communicate with animals about everything there is. And it's very important that we actually do it on purpose because we do, again, as I mentioned to you, we are telepathic. So we do communicate with our animal companions all the time. However, most people are not aware that they're doing it and what are they actually saying. Mm. So it's really important that we actually communicate with our animal companions so that we also hear what they have to say, what's important to them. And another thing what I do teach people as well is I also teach them how to communicate to, not just with, but also to the animal companions, because many times we are saying the wrong things. And so when animals, we basically telling them the wrong thing, and then they do what we told them wrongly, and then we kind of blame them for doing something wrong. So it's actually us who are doing the mistake. So it's really important to communicate with animals so that we can find out why they do what they do, what we are doing. And, you know, I mean, it's like if you have an amazing friend and both of you speak different languages, but you're having a great time together. And all of a sudden there's a person who speaks both of your languages and then you can you, you change, exchange all this mm. information you always mm-hmm. wanted to tell or know. And it's sort of, um, when you have, once you have a conversation with the animal companion, it's like depth of your relationship goes all of a sudden opens up and goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And animals are so grateful when we're finally listening to them, you know, finally we hear what they have to say. It's absolutely, totally amazing. And it's wonderful. A lot of people are actually scared to communicate with the animal companions because they think, you know, it's nice to have this really great friend who who is not blaming you or is not, oh gosh, you should have done this, this or that, right? And so they're worried when they communicate with animal companions that all of a sudden the animals will say, oh, remember two years ago you did this and this and this, right? But animals are usually not that way at all. That's a human thing. Mm-hmm. So it's really wonderful to communicate with animals. It's interesting because what I really hear you saying is about principles of good communication in general, right? Whether you're communicating with an animal or a human or something in 
that's neither of those things, right? Like a tree or a spirit, there's a um, that muscle of deep listening that you're cultivating, right? Yes. And I actually also communicate with, with plants, with rocks. I communicate literally with everything. So for yeah. me, everything is someone because everything has a soul. Would you be willing to just share a little bit? Because I'm imagining that that, I mean, it's a really particular skill set. And I'm imagining that it came on maybe in childhood. I don't know. But I'm just curious of like, how did you, how did you start listening? So as I mentioned to you, everybody's telepathic. So telepathy, a lot of people call it the universal language. I, however, like to call it a soul to soul connection, because when you communicate telepathically, you actually connect with the soul. And that's why you also can communicate with anybody who has left the physical body, because you connect with the soul. So again, everybody has this ability. Is it, It's not possible that you are not born with it. You have this ability. However, with me, what happened is um, I actually grew up in both of my parents were alcoholics and my mother was mentally abusive. So every time I went kindergarten, late on school or whatever, something happened when I was not at home. I came home and I was punished for it. So literally from a small child on, when I came home, I had to learn to read my mom's mind so I knew how to behave, what to do. Can I say something today or can I just do my chores and quietly disappear? Like this was a literally um, survival for me. Yeah. So I had to learn that. I didn't know that, you know, when I when I developed it. But um, I literally, as a child, I had to become telepathic to read my mom's mind, to know how to behave, to know how to survive. It's something that we talked about here on the podcast quite a bit is the sensitivities of trauma, right? Like the sensitivities that we develop because we're in traumatic situations, yeah? Right. But on the other hand, yes, it was not an easy childhood, but I also believe that we choose our lives. And I mean, I'm so grateful that I actually developed this ability so now I can do what I'm doing, you know? So I'm very grateful for it. Mm -hmm. What's the, do you remember the first time you had a conversation like this with an animal? Well, I always, from as far as I can think back, if I saw an animal, I just knew what was happening in the animal's life. So I knew was an animal treated well, was an animal abused, or let's say I saw a dog and I knew this dog all day long couldn't go out and release him or herself. And I just knew everything about animals. I didn't know that you can talk with animals, right? Because nobody else did it. And, uh, <laughs> but I just knew, I knew what was going on in an animal's life. And, and then, you know, um, as a young adult, I took a course in animal communication and telepathy and was actually guided into how to do it on purpose rather than just it happening. So, um, and then I was able to have a real conversation rather than just, like asking questions, you know what I mean? Rather yeah. than just have this exchange of knowing. So I was able to go do it, do it on, on purpose, so to speak. But um, yeah, it's always been there. Do you remember that animal that you had that purposeful conversation with the first time or one of the first times? Yes, that was actually uh, one of my dog companions. She was rescue and she was very, very ill. She had all kinds of health issues, but she, she taught me so much. And um, for the first time, I was able to ask her how she was actually feeling and she could describe to me what was going on in, in, in her body. And that was absolutely amazing. And um, like, I, I love animals more than anything, right? Animals are more important to me than anything else in this world. And I'm, I was always close to animals and everything. But when I has, had the first time this conversation with my dog companion, it felt like so far I only we already had passed by each other. And when I had this conversation, it felt like we really connected. And mm. I asked her just two or three questions. And then I literally, I broke out in tears and I was crying for, I think, half an hour or something. It was such an amazing experience. It touched me so deep. It's such an animist framework to to view the world through, right? This idea that everything has a soul and that everything can be communicated with and can be listened to and can tell stories. It just, it feels, um, it feels like the right direction for us to be moving in, right? Yeah, because 
I don't know how people can see everything. Well, I mean, of course, everybody's different, right? So for yeah. me, everything is alive. But for other people, they see something, everything's dead. <laughs> so it's just a, a different um, yeah, way of looking looking at it. But it's, it's amazing because I can be... Um, I remember one time I was... Um, I had two dog companions at that point and I took them for a walk and it was in the country and it was getting late and I was, we were walking like the three of us, my two dog companions and me, we were walking along this really, really old railroad track. They had taken it off actually. And it was a beautiful walk. And then I thought, oh, we've been quite far, so let's turn around. And the sun was setting. It was getting a little bit scary and I thought, oh gosh, I'm here all alone, just my two dogs and me, right? And then all of a sudden I had, I heard all the animals around me and it was like being in, in being in downtown Manhattan, there were thousands and thousands of souls around me, you know, all the little mm. ants, all the little bugs, all the little creatures. It was, it was so busy. However, they didn't crowd me in, they gave me their space, but they were there and it was really, really awesome. So all of a sudden like, mm. oh gosh, yes, everybody's here. <laughs> It was mm-hmm. so, so amazing. It's like I said, it, it was like you're in the biggest crowd you can ever imagine. However, they, you had a lot of space, but there were so many souls there. It just sounds like a, a sense of belonging. Yes. And there's no separation and animals don't judge us. Um, You know, like they might look at you and say, well, you look different than I do, but hey, who are you? Like, you know, and that's it. Like one time I was also... um. Um, taking my animal companions for for a walk. I had four dog companions at that point. I have a big animal family now. And it was, again, it was early in the morning and I was walking this this path and, you know, my dogs were around me and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, out of a bush, a coyote jumped right in front of us, maybe only 10 feet away and looked at us and I looked at him and it was totally peaceful. And I just thought, oh, look, a coyote. And just totally in the moment, you know what I mean? My dogs looked at him, he looked at us. And then all of a sudden, then when my mind caught up and said, oh, a coyote, then all of a sudden the energy changed, right? (laughs) (laughs) And he had been walking with us for a few feet, right? A few few steps. And then, you know, he, he sensed that the energy changed and then he took off. But it was so amazing because we were just, there was, it didn't matter who you were, like what you were. Right. It just mattered Mm. who you were. And I have experience like that all the time. And it's absolutely wonderful. Just wonderful. You're just together. You belong together. There's no. There's no. It's such a peaceful energy. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. It just sounds really like a different kind of community where there's not the noise of voices but just like the companionship of being together like communion is what i hear communion love acceptance yes yeah. beautiful well i i want to talk to you a little bit um about this sensitive topic of um the death of animals okay and cuz i know that like sometimes animals will go off by themselves to die and, and, and sometimes they don't. And just curious of what you've noticed in terms of your own being with animals in their death. Um, what struck you? Well, first of all, I learned when I had a client once and I, I never had communicated with, with dead animals or people. Right. And, and she said to me, Claudia, my, my dog died. Can you talk with him? And it was at the beginning when I, you know, when I first started to, to communicate with animals, um, professionally, right. For clients. So I said to her, you know what, I heard a lot about it. Um, I've never done it, so I don't know. And so I said to her, I really want to try. And, that really changed a lot of things because I talk a lot to souls who have left their physical bodies. And um, I never had read a book about it, never seen a movie about it or anything. So I was like a blank slate, which I'm very grateful now because so when I started communicating with souls who have left the physical bodies, I didn't have any pre-assumptions. You know, usually if you have pre-assumptions, then you're kind of forming an opinion and then you kind of everything you hear, whatever has to be pressed into that 
shape what you think it should be kind of thing, right? right. So when I started communicating with animals who, has, who have left the physical bodies, I didn't know anything. So what I know now about the, the afterlife is literally what I heard from the souls who have made this transition. And so first of all, what's really important to know is that we are always non-physical. Uh-huh. And sometimes we have a physical experience. So like we're always, we always exist on the soul level and we move in and out of body. Correct. Got it. So even while you are now physical, most of you is non-physical. And even quantum physics now says that only 3% or less than 3% of you is actually physical. The rest is non-physical. I love that. (laughs) So what I always say to my clients is, first of all, get away. You have to change your vocabulary to really understand everything. And you have to get rid of the word death and dying because death doesn't exist. So what you have to exchange it to is leaving the physical body and moving on. So your, your soul leaves the physical body, that's death or that's dying. And death is you're moving on from a physical to non-physical. So you're moving on to the next part of your journey. It's the same, let's say you have children or family members or, you know, whatever. And they decide, okay, I'm going to go to Europe. I'm going to move there or to Africa, whatever, right? Moving to another country. So just because they're not there anymore doesn't mean they're gone, right? You still talk with them either you on the phone or you through the internet or you text or whatever. You're still in communication, right? Just because you don't see them doesn't mean they're not there anymore, And so that's the same thing. So you go from the physical to the non-physical. And it's really, really important that we actually stay in touch with our animal companions after they leave the physical body. Because they never leave us. It is us. It's the human thing who is out of sight, out of mind, never the animals. And I remember when I I learned about that, um, my first dog companion, he left his physical body when I was 16. And so, of course, at that point, you know, I didn't know anything about that. I mean, the only thing I was taught was I I grew up evangelical and I was taught, yes, there's a life after, but nobody has ever come back. Well, that's basically what I grew up with. I was really helpful when my grandmother left her physical body (laughs) anyway. So um, when he left his physical body, my first dog companion, like I said, I didn't know. And then I had this experience with my with my client I just mentioned to you about, you know, with with her dog companion. So I got in touch with my first dog companion and I talked with him and he was, he was almost in tears. If he would have been physical, he would have been in tears. And he said, finally, after all those years, I've been there all the time. And I've been waiting, waiting for you to connect with me. So now I communicate with all of my animal companions who have left the physical bodies every single day. Could be several times, for sure twice. Like in the morning when I get up, I always say good morning to them. At night when I go to bed, because usually they have more time, you know, then I really chat with with with, with each of them. And during the day, sometimes they pop in or whatever, or if I need some advice, I talk with them. So they are literally there with me all the time. They're, they're just a thought away. Because again, the animals are always there. We are the ones, again, out of sight, out of mind. Mm. So it is so sad that, that, I mean, animals are our, literally our best friends, because if you think about it, we are really who we are in front of our animal companions, right? It, we, you're probably a little bit different when people are around, but when you, your animal companions, you are really who you are. It doesn't matter if you just got out of bed and your hair sticking up or you're sick and you're, you know, who knows what, or you're, you're dressed up to the nines. Your animal companion sees you in any shape, size, whatever, and, and feeling and emotion. But with people, we always put, in, put on a really kind of a face. You know, everything is okay, but not with our animal companions. So they really, really know us. And when they leave the physical body, it's so sad to break up that relationship. Because like I said, it's like a family member moving in another country. We stay in touch. So why not staying in touch with our animal companions after leave the physical mm. body? Because all that happened is they went from physical to non-physical, but the soul is immortal. The soul cannot die. So please stay in touch. You know, it reminds me um, after my, I was really close with my grandmother. And after she died, a few months after she died, I had this dream. I was grieving. In my dream, I was with her and I was like, oh, you, you left. I, I'm so, she's like, why are you so sad? I'm like, you left. 
And um, she said, but the love is still there, right? The love is always there. Like, can you, can you feel that the love is still there? And it was such a comfort to tap into that, right? And I think that's what you're saying of that they're still there with us and we can still tap into that connection even when they're not in physical form. Yeah. Absolutely. Because yeah. yes, they are, they're always there. They're always, always there. So yes, it, again, it's the way we see it. We have to change what we believe, how we see things. So it's that you, it's not that you're tapping it. Well, yeah, if you want to use that word, yes, but they're literally right there. <laughs> I mean, they are there and, and they, a, a soul, when a soul has left the physical body, a soul can be with you two ways. One is that the soul is right there with you. So, you know, sometimes when you, you know, think you might hear them, see them, smell them, feel them, see them in the corner of the eye, you're not going crazy. The soul is really there. Or sometimes, you know, you might hear your, your cat meowing or your dog barking or something, you know, they're really there. Or the soul can look in on you from a distance. Like you and I, we are communicating right now. We are not in the same room either, right? right. It's from a distance. Or the listeners, they listen to listening to us and they are not here either, right? So it's from a distance. So the same thing. The soul can be either with you or looking in on from you from a distance. So that's why I always say they're only just a thought away. We just have to think about them. Boom, there they are. Do you have a sense like with humans when we leave physical form, if we do it well, there is a lot of um, good grief and appropriate ritual to help that transition. And I'm curious if you have a sense of, is any of that needed for animals when they cross over? Or what is what is needed for animals? What do they need when they cross over? Again, for me, there's no difference between humans and animals because the soul is the soul. It doesn't yeah. matter if you had a f uh, in physical form right. what who you were, right? It, what, what, what you were. So because the soul is soul, once the soul is the physical body, it's just energy. So there's only, because also some people say, you know, there's a heaven for animals and a heaven for people. No, it's, there's only one, there's only energy. So what I've, I mean, um, what I do when I check in with animals and even people, when they have left the physical body is I first make sure that the transition went well, that they are not stuck. In all those years I communicate with, 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 with souls, I've seen it three times. And then I help the soul to make this final step. And But there is not really any ritual because a ritual, and that's like I said, that's, that's just my opinion. So, I mean, everybody, you know, has their own different uh, thoughts about it. But because a soul is non-physical, a soul is not bound by any rituals. So they really don't need it. The only thing they really need is just our love so that we kind of send them love and our best wishes for this next part, like for, for this transition. And it happens really, really fast, just like that. Boom. If everything goes well, it just goes like this. What do you mean if everything goes well? Like I said, uh, in, in those in all those years I communicated with animals, it happened three times that the soul kind of got stuck. But so the transition literally just boom, you transitioned from physical to non-physical. Mm -hmm. Claudia, when you talk about um, communicating, I'm curious of the, like the how, like I know that we talked about listening, but does the information, does it show up in words? Does it show up in pictures? Is it just kind of a knowing? How is okay. it for you when you communicate? Uh, for me, like for me, it's two different ways. Um, when I communicate with my animal companions, it is just an exchange of knowing. So I usually don't sit down with them and do a Q and A kind of thing. I just know. I just know. You know, there's just. I just know. It's just this. It's like it's like when when a wave comes in. You know, the wave goes in and out, in and out. So it's kind of like that. Or breath goes in and out, and that's how I communicate with my animal companions. I just know everything about them. They know everything about me. It's just there. If I want to know something more specific, let's say they would say. Um, or they're a little bit worried about something, then I would go more specific and say, hey, what's going on? Or, you know, so then I go really more specific. But continuous with my animal companions, I just know exactly what's going on. It's just there. You know, it's just there. Um, when I communicate with um, with clients, then, of course, it is more like a Q&A because they have specific questions. 
And when you communicate telepathically, there's many, many different ways that can be done. So when you first start out, there might be only one channel open, that open and then another one opens. I've done it so many times that all the channels are open. And that means channel can be, you can hear words, you might see pictures, you might get a, a feeling in your body, you might just know, uh, some people might see colors. So there's different ways. So if you start communicating with animals, it's not that somebody says you have to hear it or see it one way. No, no, no. There's many, many different ways. And like I said, I've, I've been doing it so long that I get it in all kinds of different um, channels. It's like when you learn a language, you know, you know a few words like thank you and please or whatever. And then, or when you start first, you know, um, the ABC, you can maybe read, but, but that doesn't mean you can read Shakespeare. You know, that takes a while. So it's kind of the same thing. So the more, the longer you do it, the more channels will open. And I'm I'm guessing when you use the word channel, what you're talking about is that you're turning your attention fully towards that being. And then there becomes a passage for information to move through. Am I getting it? Yes. Well, with channel, actually, when communicating, I meant the channel of words, the channel of pictures, the channel of colors. So that's what I mean with that. Got it. But um, yes. Um, well, with me, because I don't just translate, I'm I'm also an empath, so I'm really totally be. I, I, so I totally am this being I'm communicating with. I can feel anything. I I can feel their fear. I, so when you communicate with somebody, they might say to you, "Oh gosh, I'm scared." Uh, let's say they're in an abusive relationship. They can say, "Oh gosh, I'm scared of my husband." which, okay, fine. When I communicate with this person and this person says to me, I'm scared of, 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 of my husband, I feel the exact pain, the exact fear, the exact everything, what this person is experiencing. So it's almost like I am this person. Mm -hmm. So I don't just translate like on a two-dimensional level, really. I'm, it's, it's on a three-dimensional level that I really get it all. Yeah, that makes sense. But most 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 communicators they literally do it on a two two dimensional level. Literally, they just you know they'll translate. Like same if you if a uh, 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 translate between two languages, they just translate. You know, like when you see the politicians, you know they have their translators. Yeah. And so you translate the words, but quite often because they don't have the feelings in it, so sometimes actually words can be translated the wrong way because it's just like word to word to word to word, right? Gotcha. So when I communicate, literally, it goes further. I am this being, and I human or animal doesn't matter. And like I said, if you if you have fears, I feel the, the panic. I feel I I go through everything with them. Would you be willing to share an experience that you've had where you've been able to? You said in your bio that you have really helped people optimize their lives and their animals' lives, and I'd love to just hear a little bit about like a moment where you've been using this three-dimensional translation and really helped to bridge that gap between a, a human and an animal. Yeah, actually one, one, uh, one conversation pops in my mind right now. This was quite a few years ago. I had uh, this client and she contacted me with, because her cat companion was starting to, to get really quiet. And she thought, you know, she went to the vet, there was nothing wrong, but she just thought, well, it's not quite right. You know, she's so quiet. What's going on? So I connected with a cat companion. It's usually done over distance. Like I have clients all over the world. It, telepathy has no distance restrictions. That's also why, again, you can communicate with souls who have left the physical body because, you know, they're not there. <laughs> um, so I connected with her cat companion over distance and um, she said to me, I said to her, what's going on? And she said to me that she was scared. And I asked her why. And she said, um, she literally said, my guardian is dying internally. And I said, okay. So I talked to my client. And so she said, well, I would, no, no, she was fine. She, she just had a checkup. Everything is fine. So I asked her, can I come in? And I said, can you please, you know, 
to get into more details. And she said, yes, a few years ago, something happened. And ever since, um, she, her, her guardian was just not the same anymore. So I also, you know, connected with my client, of course. And so what happened was uh, several years ago, one of her coworkers just left a physical body, boom, like that, just, just had a um, heart attack and boom. And um, she was very deeply affected by that, but she hadn't realized it. So I talked her through all of that and whatever. And then she, during our conversation, she really, because she said, oh, no, she, she went to, um, to um, I'm sorry, she had um, to a psychiatrist and she had treatment, everything, everything's fine. But so when, when I was digging with her a little bit deeper, she literally, what she had done, this experience, she kind of had put in a, she had put a wall around it. And it was there and it was eating her up internally. And she, it, it was almost like, you know, like a cancer growth, right? Um, and it was there and it was just destroying her. And she, she didn't know that. So I was able to help her to really look into it, to let that energy go. And it, it changed her entire life. And also a cat said that, um, you know, we talked a few months later again and her cat companion also all of a sudden her cat companion was outgoing again this lady was happy again and her cat companion said that if her client wouldn't have if her guardian wouldn't have changed she would literally she was she was dying inside you know she was withering away and it wouldn't have taken long and you know just a few years and she would have left the, my, my client would have left the physical body and now it, it changed her entire life around she was happy again. She was able to, she, because she was putting that away, that experience, it somehow just shocked her because it was a good friend of her, that that um, that colleague, and she was very young, and it just sh shook her deep down, right? And so, again, she was able to, to really work through it and let it go, and it was like she started to blossom again. Beautiful. So thank God for her cat companion who had made her aware by showing her she was getting quiet and quiet, which made my client communicate with her cat companion, which pointed her in the right direction. And I was able to help her. <laughs> so animals are truly amazing. We really have to listen to them. They know so much. Yeah, thank you. That's a great story. Would you be willing to talk a little bit about grief and the grief when we lose an animal? Absolutely. Um, again, I personally think that the relationships that we can that we have with animals are can be some of the closest ones ever, even closer than with people, because they are so pure. And grief is grief is actually a three dimensional thing. So when we are grieving, it's it's we are grieving for us. So when an animal leaves the physical body, we are grieving because we, we can't physically see them anymore. You know, we can't touch them anymore and stuff, right? But when you leave your physical body and everything goes well, you are literally surrounded by love and happiness. There's no better place to be because there's no worry. There's no nothing. Literally, there's just happiness and joy. So when you make this transition, you're at a beautiful, beautiful place. So. But the ones that are still here, we are grieving for what we have lost. And um, and yes, I mean, even though that I communicate with all my animal companions who have left the physical bodies every single day, I'm still going through grief as well because that three, I mean, we have chosen to be right now three-dimensional to to have all this feeling touching stuff <laughs> kind of thing, right? So of course, when it's not there anymore, we miss it. But really when the animals leave the physical bodies, first of all, when they do, it's so important that we get in touch with them just to know that everything went well and that we support them and everything and, and just to be happy for them. But the grief is, is one of my dog companions. I left his physical body once. And for one year I had to walk around with sunglasses. It didn't matter if it was, it was raining, snowing, sun was shining because I could just break out in tears at any moment. So, you know, we, we have to grieve however you need to grieve, you grieve because nobody should tell you, you know, this is what you have to do. Or what No, this is your feeling. This is your journey. I mean, 
another uh, dog companion of mine left her physical body and she had all kinds of health issues. She's, she taught me so much and she also had problems with her hips. So she couldn't walk that well. And, uh, you know, in the summer, in the winter, I, you know, bundled her up and everything. And she had this one special blanket. And after she left her physical body, I took that blanket and didn't wash it <laughs> and put it under in my bed. So kind of under my pillow and half down my body, so to speak. Right. And I slept on that uh, blanket for years. And the only reason why I stopped doing it is because it was starting to fall apart and I wanted to keep it. So um, however you grief, you grief. But important is to know that grief or leaving it like I'm not saying goodbye. For me, I'm just grieving the three-dimensional mm. thing. It's mm -hmm. not I'm grieving somebody died, you know, because, again, I know that death doesn't exist. It's just the three-dimensional yes. thing. So that's why, you know, any of my family, family members who have ever left the physical body, all I do is literally, like, 20 hours of the day, I talk with them. Talk, 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 talk. And that's what helps me. And then the grieving, again, is that three-dimensional thing. Um, but I have to talk to them just to make sure that I'm in touch with them and, um, knowing that they're still there mm. and they are, they are. Otherwise, how can I communicate with somebody? I can tell people things that they, you know, how, how do I know that if they're not like, that's why I'm saying change your vocabulary, because for most people, death means gone over with either buried or you know, whatever. Right. And it's gone. No, no, no. It's just, it's just the body that you leave behind. Mm -hmm. You're just taking off your clothes. Mm -hmm. Claudia, thank you so much for being here and um, being on Bespoken Bones. And I just, um, I feel really grateful for the work that you do and, and the listening and the kindness that I hear in in the work that you're offering. And I just want to um, say thank you and also direct folks to your website um, again, which is claudiahair.com. Hair is H-E-H-R, claudiahair.com. Thank you so much for having me because this is so wonderful to talk about animals. Um, most people are not aware how incredible animals are, the beings that they are, the depths they have. And... So thank you so much for listening and thanks for all your listeners for listening in and thank you so much. And next time, you know, when you look at your animal companions, don't see them as your dog, your cat, see them as Charlie, my friend, or Susie, my companion, you know? Really elevating the status of the relationship to, to companion and to where it needs to yes. be. Yeah. And if you had animal companions who have left their physical bodies, even if it's years ago, Get in touch with them. You will be amazed. They are still around. You will be amazed. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you. I, I want to thank everyone for listening to this episode of Bespoken Bones. And so if you feel inspired by what you heard, um, you can check out my website, which is emancipating-sexuality.com. You can learn more about the sexual and ancestral wellness work that I offer. And also just like really the reason that Claudia was on the show today was because Lana wrote and said, hey, could you have this person on the show? And that's how that happened. So if there are people that you want to hear, um, I want to make that happen for you. So just drop a line. Let me know what's up. Um, love to love to hear your thoughts. I'm Pavani Moray. This is Bespoken Bones, and I'll be back every full and new moon with more embodied goodness and ancestral wisdom. Thank you.